hello, hello. Good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome, welcome. We're just going to wait a couple of minutes while people are trickling in into my dance immersion <laughs> living room. I hope everybody's doing okay today. Let me know if you can hear the music. I think it should be fine, but... We'll give it a few minutes, and then we will start. Welcome, welcome. Let me know how you're doing today, if you're good, how has this Wednesday been treating you as we wait for a couple of more people to uh, trickle in. Give it about a minute or so and then we will get started. Okay, welcome. It's 701. <laughs> Welcome everybody, uh, happy Wednesday. I hope you're doing uh, well wherever it is that you are in this world, in this space. Welcome to Dance Immersion's Community Corner Conversations Live Series. My name is Zara Badua. I am the Administrative Assistant here in Dance Immersion. I am so excited to be kicking off season two. Uh, season one was absolutely amazing, so I'm pretty sure season two will be just as amazing looking at the guests that we have lined up for you this season. Uh, the blog or the blog or the topic that I should say is about the false dichotomy between technical uh, trained or technical or trained dancers or artists we should say or self-taught self-trained artists um, what are your thoughts between the both of them or the intersect of the both of them as well so before we start I'm just going to do a acknowledgement a giving of thanks before we uh, I introduce the guest that's coming on for our first episode Dance Immersion's work is centered in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. We give thanks for the many blessings that have enabled us to gather here. We give thanks to the ancestors for the path they have paid and for the protection and guidance they continue to offer as we journey forward. We give thanks to one another, knowing that we can only do what we do by working together respectfully and peacefully. We acknowledge that the land we gather on is on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishabeg, the Shipawa, and the Horushine, and the Wendat people, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. This includes the many people, named and unnamed, who have stewarded this land before our arrival. The territory is the subject of the Dish with One Spoon, One Pam Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Iroquois Confederacy and the Ojibwe and allied nations to peacefully care for and share the resources around the Great Lakes. We are, we are treaty people, including those of us who came here as settlers, either in this generation or in generations past. And those of us who came here involuntarily particularly as a result of the transatlantic slave trade. We are grateful to be able to share this space with so many knowledge keepers, including the courageous artists with whom Dance Immersion collaborates every day. Ashe. 
So thank you so much for joining us uh, this Wednesday evening. I am going to let our guests in um, and introduce them. So just give me a moment with this beautiful thing called technology. I'll let them in our dance immersion living room. Hi, Natasha, how are you? Hi, Sarah. I'm great. How are you? Nice to meet I'm you. Good. Nice to meet you as well. <laughs> Ms. Hello, Hi. Mr. M. How are you? Very well. How are you? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Great. Yes. Great. I am very well. I am. I'm really excited. I, I, I was stalking all of you for the past week. Um, and you guys are so amazing. I don't apologize for stalking you, by the way, because it was just so much amazing <laughs> things. Um, so thank you so much for accepting the invitation. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, for those who don't know these amazing people, I'm just going to introduce them. So we'll start with Natasha Tash Jean Bart. Born in 1971, Natasha Taz, Tash John Bart's professional career spans over 36 years in the performing arts. She is a BIPOC artist, writer, dancer, teacher, street culture connector, and educator. Her credits as a performer and choreographer have taken her to well-respected stages, including Sif her expertise have garnered her numerous positions as a, as a juror for elite dance competitions internationally. She co-founded What Soul, did I say it properly? Perfect. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> what Soul Inc., a uh, Inc., sorry, a U.S.-based company dedicated to nurturing and empowering creativity, arts, and cultural awareness. She is a speaker, and a lecturer on various topics, and uses her voice to assist and inspire artists from all walks of life. She is presently fulfilling her role as a dancer slash interpreter for B-Boyism Dance Company in My Body by Crazy Smooth. That was here in Toronto in March, uh, also co-presented by Dance Immersion. Yes. It was amazing. I just had to say that. <laughs> um, Natasha is a wife, mother of four children, and Nana to five lively grandchildren. I read that and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and Nana to five lively grandchildren. Natasha divides, divides her time between her home, Las Vegas, her hometown, Canada, and the rest of the world. Yes. Yes. Welcome, Miss Tash. Thank you so much, Zara. Hey, everybody. Thank you for uh, coming and joining us. <laughs> nice to meet you also mr <laughs> eric yes <laughs> pleasure pleasure and then we have mr eric Amwa. did i say it correctly yes yes that's fine okay um he is currently a second year phd student of anthropology at the university of alberta he graduated with a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in Dance and Theater Study from the University of Ghana and acquired an MA in Dance Knowledge, Practice, and Heritage from the Erasmus Mundus Choreo Mundus International Dance Masters Program convened by the NTNU Norway, University of Clermont Auvergne, France, University of Seged, Hungary and Roehampton University, UK. Anwa is a dancer, teacher, choreographer, and scholar of the Ghanaian dance forms with expensive, sorry, expensive uh, practice in neo-traditional and contemporary, in contemporary Ghanaian and African dance genres. He has taught and performed extensively in higher education, educational institutions, professional and amateur dance companies in Ghana, Norway, Hungary, Romania, Burkina Faso, just to mention a few. He is interested and involved in research areas such as dance as intangible cultural heritage, ICH, dance and identity politics, dance within museums and gallery spaces, dance anthropology, performance of heritage, and ethnography. He has published three articles so far um, no, sorry. He has published three articles so far with others under review awaiting publication. So there's more to come. 
Yes. Hopefully. Welcome, Mr. Eric. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like I need to breathe after those two bios. These are <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Um, although I've given, um, and this is to both of you, so whoever wants to go first, although I've given kind of a brief summary of what you do, um, just for the folks um, that are watching us, what is, how do you define your art practice? So what is your art practice? And then how did you learn it? Um, Diana first goes to uh, uh, Cash. Oh. Ah! Well, when I saw this, topic I was like oh my gosh um I really although I you know I'm a street dancer and nothing was you know completely created it was already created by most of the pioneers that I met later on so of course um there was a lot of freestyle for me a lot of watching tv so I would not say that I'm self-taught because I don't actually like that word because that would mean that I would be learning in a vacuum or that mm -hmm. I wasn't exposed to anything. And already with culture, um, we have so many selves. So when we start learning, it would have been really um, kind of like me looking at my belly button saying I was self-taught and I have never learned anything from anyone. First and foremost, I learned from my parents. I learned from watching TV. I learned from my community. I learned from um, anything and everything, right? So to say that um, there was a lot of improv like freestyle improvisations, but all of it was a spark. It was, it was like meta learning. I'd rather say meta learning, like, like with a higher vision, I look at something, I like it, I go and I look for the keys. It might take me longer, for sure it takes you longer when you go that route because you have many maps. But I would say that my learning style is very progressive. Um, I'm very curious. And once I have that hook, that's it, I'm gone and I start looking. And in that big, you know, tank, I find few mentors. They're not like, they don't continuously follow me, but I find the mentors. I find a few teachers. They give you a few keys and you go home, you figure it out. Maybe they're not with you forever. So it's not the, the scholar way, but I did learn jazz and ballet from, you know, uh, dance school. So I can't say I didn't learn um, more from a more linear way, but to me, it's all of it. It's all connected. So that's all I can say, because then I would have to go deeper into the whole topic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I agree. I agree with um, Tash. Um, I learned from the university. Prior to the university, I, I didn't have any personal dancing experience, mm -hmm. save for the dances that were around me all the time. Mm -hmm. that I saw in festivals, that I saw mm -hmm. at weddings, that I saw at funerals. But I was really exposed to it when I came to the university to study drama. Drama was initially my first uh, uh, love. But uh, the first time I entered a dance classroom, I thought, wait a minute, there's something happening here. So <laughs> let, me, let me check this out for a little while. And then many years down the line, I'm still here. But uh, my, my um, studies from the University of Ghana came from a more kind of a political um, um, standpoint because the study of dance um, at the, at the, in the 60s in Africa was not, study of dance at the university was not something that was um, quite popular because dance was everywhere, right? But um, in the wake of the, the uh, post-independence era, mm -hmm. when uh, the African needed some kind of motivation to reassert their own um, uh, knowledge systems and use them and be proud of them. That was how come dance found its way into the university. So dance has a, for me, uh, I came through the political uh, kind of um, leanings of dance because it was more of a nationalistic representation of who the Ghanaian was or who the African was to um, the, the rest of the world, the African genius, to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is that is where I, I, I came from. But uh, on the topic of the self-trained or self-taught, um, just like Tash said, we, we are all self-taught in a way, but it depends on who is using it and for what reason they are. 
Um, our ancestors, for example, uh, I could say were self-taught because some of the stories of the origins of these dances were mystical, right? And so they go into the forest and they see, they're supposed to see dwarfs or fairies mm -hmm. dancing mm -hmm. and they watch it and they bring it to the village and they recreate it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is a self teaching uh, moment right there mm -hmm. and they bring it to the community. And so what we consider as community dances or mm -hmm. traditional or folk dances have their origins from self teaching to say. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that is something I can also add. I mean, perhaps once we go on, we can share more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I think both of you also touched upon, um, it's kind of, and that's why we called it the false dichotomy, because it's, it's, from what I'm hearing, it's very hard to put a pin on it to mm -hmm. say, yes, you know, technically trained versus self-taught or self-trained. So why do you think, so how do we define, or do we even define those two I don't want to say polar things, but those two, how can I put this? Let's say those two terminologies, right? Like the terminology of somebody being technically trained versus somebody not or being self-taught or self-trained or how other people would say it. Uh, well, I can, <laughs> I can step in here. Well, um, technicality to me is uh, translating to ability, ability to perform something. And so uh, being technically trained either as a self-taught person or somebody in a dance school um, is, is a matter of your ability to perform. And that mm -hmm. translates also into your competency level. And uh, we must understand that uh, uh, being technically trained, um, the, the, the thing for the whole world to see is your ability to perform, right? So if you, if you don't perform to the standards of your audience or so you don't perform to the requirement of the people who are giving you that opportunity, then you fail as a technically trained person or not. Uh, mm -hmm. Our environment technically provides us um, tools to be able to um, uh, interrogate knowledge that comes to our bodies. So if somebody is a street dancer, technically the person is in a, a particular environment and that environment dictates how the person assesses information that comes to their bodies, whether they are picking it from other people or they are picking it from uh, uh, knowledge they have received, mm -hmm. right? So all of these come together to inform a person's practice. So um, in Ghana, for example, there are people I was trained in the new, the dancers I studied in the uni University of Ghana were new traditional dancers, right? They were not, they, they are not traditional dancers mm -hmm. or indigenous dancers. Indigenous dancers have functions to the people who created them and it serves them in their communities. So whatever they do, they invoke these dances. We came out of a, a political era where these dances had to find a new um, area to um, bring itself out to the emerging Ghanaian, right? And so what we learned, we didn't practice it as the indigenous people would, but these uh, two scenarios created opportunities for us to um, find our own tools to help us mm -hmm. learn the dances in certain ways, right? So mm -hmm. technicality is ability, and uh, the first dichotomy here, I find it in this first question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, don't, I don't know if Tash, Tash will add to that. I don't have much to add. That was like, I'm learning as I'm listening to Eric. Wow, like all of these, uh, it's well-defined. Um, I would also... Uh, add to ability discipline because it doesn't matter if you're trained or if you're what they call self-taught you need discipline to achieve those goals so of course when you're coming at it from let's say a more american uh, can i'm canadian but i had this american dream that i wanted to fulfill i'm watching tv i'm watching you know what's happening in america i'm watching the rappers the hip-hop the everything and all of a sudden you know i want to reach that you know but to reach it is one thing if you don't have the discipline and the ability to perform as he said and the ability to be curious and to constantly you know ask questions you know mm -hmm. for me it was a lot of questions uh, and also question means quest right you go on a quest you go on a pilgrimage and you find yourself in a strange land which is not your land and you don't know about your land, 
that's why I say it's so hard. How do you teach yourself if you don't know yourself? You're too mm. young, right? So what do you start? Where do you start? Are you an individual in a dance? Are you communal? Are you more tribal? Are you, and you don't know these things when you're young, right? So a lot of the times the parents would put you in dance schools because they see an affinity in you. Oh, you have a natural talent. And then you find yourself in a system where it doesn't work for you because it's, you, you, you don't feel free. And this mm -hmm. art and this passion, this is what you're looking for the freedom and then all of a sudden as he says it becomes political right because there's all of these this knowledge that you have in ac access you know especially with the cultural um of street dance it's black culture it's african-american culture and then once you fulfill maybe the technicalities or the technical all of a sudden you only have the technical and you're missing the artistry. You're missing the tradition. You're missing um, everything that, that would be the glue for your dance, for your body to put mm -hmm. all your parts together. Right? So that's why I say for me, the discipline and the curiosity, the questions, the trial and error over and over. And then you go back to your, your, your map, your mini maps and you start piecing you know new pathways you know together but um i think error and f not failing because i don't believe in failing but this helps us tremendously with understanding that you need some kind of blueprint and that's the technical sometimes that helps you understand what you don't have what you don't know about yourself right because you have questions that can't be answered in a scholarly way or in a linear way or logical way. You have to go inside the woods with the dwarfs, as he said, you know, and, and, and probably like tap into some spiritual uh, part of yourself, right? So it's difficult, but that's the dichotomy also, right? Mm -hmm. It's really doing, I guess, inward research mm -hmm. first um, to really de determine what your art form is yes. right um, mr eric said he started in drama and then you know somehow ended up in dance right so mm -hmm. in the beginning we may not know what my art form is and mm -hmm. that continues like it's like a compass it continuously change that direction um and then you meet people or you get life experiences mm -hmm. that add on to your toolbox yes and then once you have the toolbox then you're like okay cool what am i building and mm -hmm. how i keep you know, building this foundation, um, mm -hmm. for lack of better words, um, and then keep training and, and keep researching and mm -hmm. just keep trying to find wherever it is. You're, I, I like to call the artistic mm -hmm. journey your yellow brick road. So yes. following your yellow brick road and see where, what, like, what odds it will take you if that, mm -hmm. um, does that, does that make sense? Yeah. That makes um, a lot of sense. Mm hmm then there's like the lion that scares you on the road. And then there's like, you know, all of these strange th things coming at you, but you're absolutely right. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. You have, you know, at some point you may feel the tin man who needs a heart. So do you have the heart to be able to continue yeah. this artistry that sometimes is not too kind to yourself no. or your body? <laughs> like, it's, true. it's great. You may love it, but we do it for the love because sometimes, yeah. you know, <laughs> If not for the love, I yeah. don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but so in saying that, do you think that this road that we're talking about will defer depending on the practice? So whether you do um, traditional uh, Ganyan dance or street dance or ballet, or I can go on forever, or even like if you were, well, I mean, we're talking about dance, but if you were uh, photography, videography, so does that depend on the artistic practice or everything that we've mentioned kind of fit the same regardless of your genre? Well, I would say um, your I would rather say your artistic practice depends on your origin or where you come from. Uh, to me, it is the other way around. Your artistic practice feeds on the knowledge that you, you were exposed to in mm. the first place. Yeah. So whether you go into photography or whether you go into music or whatever you go into, um, 
your origin has a lot to say about what direction you take and how you think, right? Um, I, I, Tash mentioned about the artistry. There has been a lot of uh, discussions about whether uh, dancers from Africa are artistic enough or they are high enough as compared to the ballets and uh, the other Western forms, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, that has to do with uh, the kind of uh, ignorance that mm -hmm. um, black scholars or artists every day in, day out fight against, right? Mm -hmm. But we must also understand that the origins of our ancestors' practice is, is steeped in a lot of knowledge, so much knowledge that... Um, we benefit today even from it. I mean, those of us who call ourselves experts and scholars, or whoever we are, we've come to the universities getting all these degrees and all that. It wouldn't have been possible with, without these knowledge systems. So the artistry of, of our, our practice, whether street or whether uh, in the academy or whether in the society, uh, depends on these knowledge systems. And for, for dancers from Africa or for African dancers, they have four key elements. Uh, that um, form the foundations of these practices. Uh, one is the body, um, two is the music, um, three is the visual element, and the, f the fourth is the uh, multisensory modalities, right? Mm -hmm. the, visual, the, the visual elements come uh, with the kind of costumes we wear, the colors mm -hmm. that we, 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 we affiliate with. Mm -hmm. Every color in an indigenous society has a meaning right, and has a function at a particular point in time. Mm -hmm. um, the body as an agent of knowledge transmission uh, speaks a lot about how we transfer knowledge from one generation to the other. Mm -hmm. We are not an, um, a literal society. We are an oral society. Mm -hmm. We perform love. We perform wisdom. We perform these things. They are embodied, and we pass them on. The music can be oral or instrumental. But then when we come to the multisensory modalities, for example... I've heard people say uh, black people are so extra when they dance the facial expressions, right? The facial expressions. These come from our ancestors, right? The, the kind of noises that we make. Uh, mm -hmm. Immediately a dance comes on, there's a clap and there's something, it enters you in a way that is so different from, from other people, right? Mm -hmm. Because of your spiritual connections to these uh, uh, um, knowledge systems, um, mm -hmm. We are we are bounded by this spiritual connection um, more because everything that we do is spiritually connected. Mm -hmm. So to say that one dance is street and perhaps uh, not high enough will be to negate or take out the body element of this holistic analysis. And you cannot take body out of dance. Wow. You cannot do that. No. Mm -hmm. So if if you if you kind of demean one over the other. You, you have destroyed it, I mean, mm -hmm. as, I, as I see it. But you must also understand that the black body is resilient. Yeah, it is, um, it is dynamic. Mm -hmm. it, the black body is, um, it is a genius, mm -hmm. okay, right? And so um, whether you, that we move from the land freely or the, we are taken from the land freely, you can't take out the embodied knowledge. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the body carries all this spirituality, the knowledge systems through this movement. And because for a very long time, black people have been uh, resisting these tags, um, Western dance education puts other dances below the standards of ballet, for example. Mm -hmm. And so these uh, namings as uh, street dance, uh, that may contain some derogatory connotations, mm -hmm. Uh, just an attempt to demean the genius of the black body, right? Absolutely. But because the black body is resilient and it is going to create and perform that excellence mm -hmm. regardless of where it is, yeah. you, you, cannot, you cannot cut it out, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that our artistic practice as street dancers or as academic dancers or as professional dancers or amateur dancers, has, it has a little to do with... Um, um, who we are. It, it has everything to do with what our bodies are able to transmit. I mean, that, that will be something small. I will add. It's not small. I've spoken a lot, but I hope I didn't miss you. I didn't lose you anyway. Oh. <laughs> it was amazing. Woo. It's
I can't add anything to this because it was so eloquent and, and it touches on so many things where we come from. I think the storytelling, our ancestor, what we've heard from our parents, the music and the body. Those are two things I always try to tell my students the same thing. I said, well, how are you going to love the dance if you don't love the music? You know, mm. and And there's a lot of things like that that are not, you know, um, so important when it comes to, like, the high arts in, you know, the Western world. It's like, oh, you don't need this. You don't need the music. Oh, yeah, your facial is too extra. It reminds me of black faces or this or that. And and then they make these, these um, type of, you know, description. And you, to keep, it keeps you, you know, a bit, what would I say? You know, you feel like you're not at a high level as a dancer, as a street dancer. You feel like you, you're kind of looked down upon. You know, like that. That's the thing that really bugs me. And what he said is also, I believe, is that we don't choose because of I, I have a classical path or I have a street dance path. I really chose from where I came from. Because my mm-hmm. parents was, were watching Soul Train. Because mm-hmm. my parents were playing compa. And from my Haitian, you know, uh, you know, ancest- my ancestors. But then not really knowing the lineage of what happened to Haiti. And, and only find this, finding this out maybe 40 years later. And my parents not knowing their own origins too. Like they know they're from Haiti, but... F- from where before that, right? But those are the things that when I find out that, oh, West Africa, oh, they did all of these things. Well, that's why I have that warrior spirit as a woman. That's why my dreams are powerful. That's why my spiritual life is powerful. It's because of my lineage. But I didn't know that when I was five years old or six years old, or even when I was 20 years old, looking to be a street dancer. So all of these puzzle pieces that were really, really important, I couldn't find the fits, right? And it's where I was from, my body, what my, the music, my ancestors, that informed me, right? So I couldn't have said, oh yeah, like I can only choose street dance and because of street dance, I followed all these steps because no matter how far you follow these steps, you always hit a wall and a plateau and then it you have to start over to the beginning again and Mm -hmm. see what part you're missing and what part you're going to glue back to your dance practice, I think. But Eric said so much that I can't add to that. (laughs) It was like, (laughs) what? (laughs) I mean, if you allow me to add something to that. Sure. Um, I I always, I made this, uh, have this discussion with some of my colleagues. Uh, who a colleague of mine who is doing a PhD research in a, a Santi Kete dance, for example. And we know how um, phenomenal the Black Panther movie was, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the Wakanda greeting. Mm-hmm. Everybody says Wakanda. Everybody says Wakanda. So <laughs> one time we, we were sitting down and asking ourselves, do people really understand that this movement is part of a longer li- linguistic dance sentence among the Ashanti people, for example, mm-hmm. because, um, um, I mean, it is, I, I was so happy to find it in the movie uh, performed by these people, like our people, right? Mm-hmm. They're performing this. Many may not have any ideas about mm-hmm. what it means historically, but mm-hmm. they are doing it and it is mm-hmm. catching on. Everybody is saying Wakanda forever, Wakanda forever. But if you go to... Um, among the Ashantis, for example, in the performance of Kete Dance or Fontom from, um, th- there can be a movement where anybody who is performing it, let's say a king, the Ashanti king, for example, he can roll the hand to the right, roll it to the left, roll it inwards, and then cross it. So this, this is the longer sentence, right? What it means from the east to the west, all power belongs to me. So this is the longer sentence. But the movie took that. And so anytime I see the movie, I'm like, well, these people have just connected to their roots, but they may not have any ideas about it. That is how powerful our dances are and the knowledge that come with these dances, for example. And that is how it is important that 
we continue to have these discussions so that people will understand that the knowledge is expansive and it is available when it is for them. And then we can use it and learn and go forward with it. Yeah. Thank you. I love that. It's also to add, to, to add on to that, to understand that spirit comes first, like to, to dance um, inwards first, mm -hmm. to look inwards first, and then everything else will connect, right? Um, because if you don't have that inwards, yeah, you can do five, six, seven, eight, but how will it really look like, right? And I say five, six, seven, eight, which is, you know, classic, but like, if your body cannot move, if your spirit are not connected, and if it does move, it may not look as powerful or tell a powerful story if your inwards is not connected. What I really love, if I might add just one thing to what he said, sure. when he said Wakanda forever, and he did this, and then he went like this, and then he went, like he did to the east, to the left, and then went in, we have in locking a, a move, a step move, that's called sneak and peek, right? And we go, and we look, and we go, and we look. And, and so it reminded me of, you know, Kemba Locking, what Don created. It was very much, there was a lot of these uh, hand gestures. And Don, every time Don, Don Campbell, Lock Campbell, he passed, you know, bless his spirit, rest in peace. Um, he used to come to the camp that I organized in Las Vegas, and he used to always talk to the students and go, like be together be together and and i don't think he had no idea and at one point i was like he's doing hand mudras and those hand gestures that are part of really old traditions but he doesn't he probably he does it instinctively like it's part of him and i remember going like this is beautiful this is this is this is it this is our tradition this is the lineage and um, we have it in street culture, we have it in hip hop, we have it, you know, like all of what you see, the Wakanda forever, the fist, the this, like it's all part of it. And people sometimes take offense to it. And we're like, no, it's our language. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace, Don, yes. <laughs> yes. I love, I love how everything is so connected. Mm -hmm. It may look different depending on, you know, mm -hmm. the style or where you are in the world. But at the end of the day, we are like, you know, I'm just like, we're so connected for, yeah. for real. We're, yeah. we're, we're so connected. So mm -hmm. I just, I just, I, yeah. I'm, like, I'm like taking everything in and I'm like, just continue talking. I'm just going to sit here and just like watch you. Okay. I don't know. I don't have a pen. Of, I'm going to listen to this live for like for the rest of my life. So thank you so much. We're going to keep going, but I just had to say that. Um, Mr. Eric, I'm just going to ask you, can you repeat one more time the four elements that you were talking about? Just because you went over it quickly. If you can just say the four of them one more yes. time, if you don't mind. Yes. yes. Uh, this, this, this four key elements were propounded by a Ghanaian scholar uh, of dance uh, known as uh, Silvanus Kubo. Uh, and these four elements are the body, um, the visual element, uh, the musical component, and the multisensory modalities. Yes. Beautiful. And, uh, yeah, you know, uh, back to the, the movie again, you realize that they showed a lot of colors and a lot of symbols, right? And mm -hmm. the, you, there was uh, the Adinkra symbols, for example. I'm only speak, speaking to the Ghanaian element because that is where I come from. The Adinkra symbols. Um, some of these symbols, uh, they are they are proverbs on their own, right? Mm -hmm. They are a king can sit in state, or anybody can represent their whole mood or state mm -hmm. of mind through a symbol. They don't have to speak, mm -hmm. right? They just wear a cloth with that symbol or a series of symbols mm -hmm. that people will look at and realize, wow, this is uh, what is going on here, right? For example, at funerals, mm -hmm. when the king. Or chiefs are not required to shout, for example. Mm. So they speak louder with music and dance. And they speak louder with the visual elements that they wear. Mm. And they speak louder with their bodies. They speak louder with their actions, their gestures. So an Ashanti king, for example, doesn't have to get a megaphone or microphone and start shouting. He can, he can just vile up his warriors for war through music. Mm. and dance wow. right yes and so for example most of the dances we perform in africa again the, the term african dance 
to represent <laughs> it's it's funny but <laughs> but <laughs> but most 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 of our dances have the same name as the music so mm. when we say when we say kitty it is kitty music and dance mm mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. There is no kitty music without kitty dance. Mm-hmm. The music complements the movement. Mm-hmm. The movement complements the music. Mm-hmm. Right. And so um, at a funeral, for example, mm-hmm. um, somebody can dance and hold the head. Mm-hmm. This symbolizes that uh, I, I'm, I'm in pain. Mm-hmm. Right. Can, can just bite this and say, this is, I'm in pain. And this, something has um, dropped in my eye, which means I'm in pain. So there, there are a whole lot of, I need comfort. It's not different from this. I need mm. comfort, right? And these, all these elements, when you look at our dances, for example, some of the drums that our, our drummers or ancestors created had these carvings on them. And these, all of these are connected in the dancing event. So as an outsider, if you look from an outside into the mm. dancing event, you're just going to see people happy, smiling, and moving their bodies. But you never make these connections with the music they are responding to, mm. the theme, the mood that they are in before they are dancing, and all these connections that come to make the dances they are performing meaningful. At the end of the day, it is the meaning behind it that is important. That is the meaning that we are going to carry, uh, we are going to pass along to the next generation. If the meaning is lost, the movement are useless. Yes. Absolutely. So we, have, we, we need the body. We need the black dancing body. We need the, the black dancing body um, houses all this knowledge. Mm-hmm. Right. So we, we have to come out of that kind of um, mentality that uh, the black dancing body is, is not, is, is, is lower. It is not. We, we, there is no race on this earth that is intellectually bigger than us. I mean, of our ancestors were able to tell when it was going to rain. <laughs> they, didn't, exactly. they didn't need anybody to tell them it was going to rain. Yeah. They, they knew because the environment, they, they studied the environment, they, they studied mm-hmm. medicine, they studied all these things. They put it in their bodies, mm-hmm. right? They danced it. They danced to heal. Mm-hmm. They danced to, to, to release stress. Mm-hmm. And so they lived, they lived longer. We didn't, we didn't have to take pills and all that. So this, this dance, this black dancing body, no matter where it is, has the ability to, to promote this kind of excellence and this genius that, that mm-hmm. for the whole world will see and know that these guys are not backing down. <laughs> <laughs> the black, the black, the black resilience, resiliency through movement. Mm-hmm. Yes, is what I would I yes. would call it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um. Well, then I feel like I don't even want to ask this this question, but I'm going to ask <laughs> anyway because <laughs> I feel like this question becomes mute. The question that was coming up. Um. I was going to say, looking back at your artistic journey or the journey that you're still on because uh, of the, the perception that as long as you have breath, you are still on this journey. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that you would have done differently um, in your artistic development? Maybe Tash? <laughs> <laughs> no, there was, I, I'm happy with everything. I would not change one single thing. Everything mm-hmm. had purpose, everything. So taking one thing would change the course. And there's so much joy in my life because um, I followed that intuition from my black body. The way he talked about, it informs me. The older I get, the, more, the wiser I get. And all of these things that we can still attain if we listen, if we're connected to our bodies um the changing of weather gives me a pressure in my head and now i know you know that there's the atmosphere is changing i might be able to say "Hmm, it's gonna rain right it's not lost but what he said is so true so i would not change anything at all (laughs) yeah same here i I wouldn't change anything i I don't think anything what it was a mistake uh, mm-hmm. Up to this point, I wouldn't change mm-hmm. anything. No, mm-hmm. uh, I I rather welcome more opportunities to learn mm. uh, because I'm, I'm I am forever 
a student of dance and culture. I, I would university would give me a certificate, right? <laughs> but but uh, I, I would forever be a student of the knowledge that has pushed me to this where I am today. Yeah, I won't change anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a feeling. I'm like. I think this question. <laughs> I asked it anyway, but I had a few. <laughs> um, so in engaging, so throughout your artistic process, I'm imagining that you have engaged with, with other artists because mm -hmm. uh, Tashi had said before, we don't live in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not, it's not me, myself, and I mm -hmm. during your artistic uh, practice. Um, did your experience defer working with them depending on their artistic background or their, as we're calling it, their training, like their training experience? Um, for me, no. It was depending on who they are mm -hmm. as how they um, receive life. And I learned this with time as, you know, to be a teacher sometimes, you know, or a scholar, you have a list of things you need to do for your class and you have your curriculum and and i remember going in class with my set of things and going like oh they're tired today let's play games you know and change it in the moment because i was like what is this gonna serve if they can't learn and then more the more i taught the more i realized everybody had a different different strategies of learning different capabilities some students were shy some students were um, introverted extroverted so it didn't matter what style they did once I got to the root of who they were I could teach them anything and really at the end of I hate to say that cliche at the end of the day but it really <laughs> goes back to teaching them a two-step the basic most you know, what I did with my parents when I was probably one year old and going step, touch, step, touch. You know, how many people don't know how to do that, right? Mm -hmm. it, could, it doesn't matter if you're trained, not trained. Just something so simple. Going back, like, the, it's very complex as it is, you know, once you're, um, like some people call master teacher. I have a problem with that, too. <laughs> I have a problem with that, too. But... Um, <laughs> But then they complexify everything. And I'm like, wow, you're not ev even able to do the simplest thing. You know, mm -hmm. slap, snapping your fingers on the rhythm. You don't understand rhythm. You don't understand the downbeat. You don't. Un so, so before I even go into dance, I'm like, no, I have to teach you about music. I have to mm -hmm. teach you about rhythm. And what he said, the Sutu dance one way in their celebration when they're mourning because they quilt these big covers, you know, and then they become heavy for every ancestor that passed. That's why they dance low in the ground, right? And he was talking about the other ones. And this is, to me, that's important to understand. But if I don't teach them, that two-step, my little students, you know, anybody could be young, old, 50-year-old, then I'm doing a disservice to, the, to any art form, to just the human body, right? Because mm -hmm. that two-step is how you started walking too. You had to crawl, you had to do all these steps. And sometimes the teacher comes with a huge curriculum and everything is, has to be done and it's, not helping it they get lost in too much information right but you only learn that once you've given too much information right you only learn that once you've done the opposite of what you know is serving and then you're going hmm well that did not work right so I didn't become a great teacher in a day I'm still learning and this is what he said this is what Eric said I love learning maybe I'm addicted to it and and later on in my years, I would I picked up the bass because I want to learn music because I love the bass. I love the foundation. I love the fundamentals. Before foundation, mm -hmm. there has to be fundamentals, right? And this is another thing I always um, have, you know, little discussions with my students because I'm like, well, yeah, you can build a foundation, but if you don't have the essence of what you're building and how to build it, well, there's nothing can be built, right? So, mm -hmm. but anyways, I'm like, going somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You can keep going. I love it. 
<laughs> fantastic, fantastic response. I learned a lot. Um, I, I would just add that uh, in my um, in working with other people and uh, other artists um, and other scholars or other choreographers. Now I I I, I speak more than I dance. So uh, in, in working with other people, uh, I I always approach. I go into that kind of relationship with a mindset that no one human being embodies our knowledge. Mm. Um, mm. And so there is room to be corrected, right? Mm. So just, just like she said, you don't go in there thinking that you're going to be perfect. Mm. You don't do that. Culturally, it is, it is irresponsible mm -hmm. to think that. Because uh, even when growing up as a child in, in, in a village setting, learning the dances of your elders, mm. as a child, when these dances are happening, you are standing on the periphery, uh, attempting to replicate what you see. Mm -hmm. uh, the more you do that, your elders encourage you, right? They encourage you, they cheer you on. You make mistakes. You are still corrected. You are encouraged. And then you get to the point where you have, you embody the knowledge at that particular age in your life to be able to dance with your peers. And then as it goes on, you gain more layers of understanding that will bring you to a point of teaching. Mm -hmm. So teaching, we cannot run away from teaching because mm -hmm. it is our responsibility to pass on the knowledge Absolutely. because that is, that is um, innately part of our DNA. We have to pass it on, right? So uh, anybody who says we're going to dance and not teach is in trouble. You are, you are failing the fathers and the mothers. Mm -hmm. They are going mm -hmm. to come at you, right? So, <laughs> so you, because you can't keep it, you have to pass it on. Um, there are, I, I, I invited some of my colleagues here. I have to give them a shout out if you permit me. Oh, sure. Uh, some, of, some colleagues I have worked with, uh, Sena Chuga, um, who is uh, doing a Fulbright PhD at uh, Temple University. But he's one of the most phenomenal dancers I've seen in my life and I've worked with. Right? And when you get into these situations, you, you, are, you, you meet at the point of mm. sharing fundamentals, mm. for example. Mm. What is the what are the fundamentals of your practice? Mm. And what forget the ideas. Let's mm. let's talk about fundamentals. Mm. Where do we where do we meet? Where do we where can we start the collaboration from? Right? Is it a wave? Is it a smile? For example, mm. it, is it a blinking of the eye? It is is it a um, touching of of body part? Where do we meet? Mm. As soon as we are able to locate that, we can then just get comfortable discussing how these can lead us into possibilities of projecting ideas on mm -hmm. other people's bodies and then give them the opportunities to also accept it or reject it. Because in any creative process, I, I gravitate more towards rejection and resistance mm. because we come from resistance. That's mm -hmm. my mindset. So if you're able to resist the knowledge that you're receiving and um, mediate that re uh, resist resistance, to create something that your body accepts, mm. then we can create something beautiful, right? Mm. Together, something that is not mine. That is something that is ours, mm. right? It is not mine. So, because uh, in, in our indigenous dances, our forefathers and our foremothers didn't put their names on it. They didn't own it. Mm. None of these indigenous dances have names like um, uh, foresight or these big big names in dance. Mm. They didn't. It was commun It was given to the community. Mm -hmm. So whatever you wanted to do with it, if you moved from the village and came to an urban setting and didn't have that kind of environment to recreate the dances, uh, you can be termed as a street dancer of that form or not. Mm -hmm. But you still have that knowledge to share. And you mm -hmm. can't say it is yours, mm -hmm. right? You just have to create more. So that is the kind of mindset I bring when I come into working with other very talented people, I must say, uh, that is my approach. That is my approach. Yeah, I, I always tell my students and uh, people I teach that I used to have six packs when I danced a lot, but now I just have one big bowl in front of me. <laughs> but uh, all the dance, all my dancing in my body has become worse. So now I speak, that is why I speak more than I dance. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's so amazing. Um, I to know is to teach. To know is to teach. 
um and and it really goes back i think i think that's that's this it goes back to how we started that we are not in a vacuum and we communicate to mm-hmm. each other through movement we we also communicate to keep things going right mm-hmm. um there's an african proverb that says that um when an elder dies it's like a library has been burned down mm-hmm. right um because we haven't gotten that information so while we're here we have to keep sharing mm-hmm. that information wherever it is your information come from because you also realize that the information is really the same the presentation might be different mm-hmm. um but a lot of the information is the same a lot of the, the i mean both of you come from different walks of life mm. but i see so many intersectionalities mm. in the things that you, you you've done and continue and will continue um mm. to do uh so it's it's so it's so beautiful to see uh how you're pulling people in mm-hmm. and we're and like tashi said we're going back to the fundamentals mm-hmm. um a lot of the times people don't want to do fundamentals or foundations mm-hmm. as we call it but don't realize that you can't do these big big things if you cannot do a two step mm-hmm. on beat mhm and people think it's easy but apparently a two step mm-hmm. on beat is not the most easiest thing um, in the world right um mm-hmm. especially if you're doing i mean there's like music well there's all forms of music but two step let's say on a drum will look very different than mm-hmm. two step on recorded music Absolutely. and some people cannot do both or cannot do one or the other mm-hmm. right um uh, but it's just really going back to your foundations mm-hmm. where did it start mm-hmm. and then going from there and evolving mm-hmm. from there and not being bogged down by your titles. Mm. Um the title I feel I feel like titles sometimes can 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 lead us astray, mm-hmm. right? So if I say well I'm a technically trained dancer. Mm. Great. Now what? Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, I I I'm, I'm self-taught. I whatever. Great. Now what? Right? Mm-hmm. Um if you're not able to transmit that information through the four elements that we were talking about or if i look at you and you're moving and i feel nothing it doesn't really matter where in the spectrum you're from you've kind of done in the service to the art form if you're not making me feel something Absolutely. if dance and movement is really about feeling in spirit regardless of where you're from whether you clap or you mm-hmm. kick up a leg i should be like Oh, my spirit mm. moved right like the yes. spirit should be connected yes. and if it's not what are you doing <laughs> true right? um so we're going to come up to we're going to start wrapping up um my last question for for new basically i would say for new artists for every artist um because both of you said you will continue continuously be a scholar of dance and mm-hmm. movement um continue on your yellow brick road to find your wizard of oz wherever that whatever that may look like um how do you in how do you find your voice how do you find your voice how do you find um your path or continue on the path or no that is your path i know that was a very a lot in that question but um, let me let me take it again um for all artists whether new someone in their path or have done this for a long time um how do you start understanding your artistic path how do you find your voice or even know that you're on the right track hmm. <laughs> Tash, it, 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 please will you do the honors? <laughs> it's a long road. For me, um I've always used the past a lot to inform my future. Um so I would have a lot of foresight and look at well I've done this and I've done that and now I have to go this way. But with age and uh, a little bit more wisdom, I tell people that every morning you got to wake up and do it all over again and start mm-hmm. over with everything that you now know you know and remember of course have all the stories but don't get bogged down by the like all of the 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 stuff that didn't work out right this is why you wake up today is to have another chance to make it happen for yourself then mm-hmm. everything in the future is also having that meta learning like the higher view over the whole landscape and and you know make these choices for you but if you and as i say carlos castanada had this book saying if you go on a path of fear 
you will only meet fear. If you keep following the path of heart, you will create more love, more art, more heart, more everything. So I wake up every morning on a path of heart. What makes my heart beat today? Sometimes I want to play music. Sometimes I want to write. Sometimes, and that's what I tell my students, you go and you find what moves you, what moves that heart, what makes it flutter, you know, when it wakes up in the morning, it beats a little faster. And then from that, you know, you let go of all of the expectations that you have. It's good to have expectations, but that's why people get dissatisfied. That's why people get frustrated because they haven't fulfilled the picture that they had in their mind. I'm like, yes, have the picture, but let it go. Then every day live in this moment because this moment is not promised tomorrow. And that's all, you know. <laughs> that's amazing. That is amazing. That is amazing. I, I will just add on that. <laughs> I will add on that. <laughs> I will try. I will try to be. Um, I I I have been um, for for the past couple of years trying to bring attention to the excellence of the black body. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the black body as. Uh, an embodiment of fantastic, powerful knowledge, right? Mm. The black body as capable. Mm. So what I would tell other artists, uh, African-Americans, Africans in the diaspora, um, African Africans in Africa, is that take care of your body. Yes. Take, venerate your black body. Mm-hmm. Um, when we go to our villages and we listen to the traditional drumming, no one drum has the same size. Mm. no one drum has the same shape uh, no one drum sounds the same mm-hmm. every drum is shaped differently to uh, project a different sound mm. when we look at these differences um, they all come together to make beautiful music that mm. we understand so never uh, despise your body because in in the frame of things or in the in the in the arrangement of the drum instrument your body your body shape or your body size is a representation of one of that drums and when it is beaten uh, it joins other drums and they make beautiful music that influence communities people mm-hmm. um, the great dr kwame Nkrumah, for example uh, all these people to push the agenda of the uh, of the black uh, intelligentsia, but uh, as a new artist, I would say find find the roots of your practice, mm-hmm. um, study it, mm-hmm. expand it, um, test it, mm-hmm. argue with it, fight mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. but above all, love it mm-hmm. because uh, it is a gift from your ancestry, right? Absolutely, it is a gift and it is resilient <laughs> and it is not going to die. When you die, it is not going to die. Mm-hmm. When you are physically incapable of uh, practicing your dance again, still pass it on, teach it, inspire people to do it, mm-hmm. but love it. It's yours. It's yours. And and when you have the chance, come home. Don't listen to all the negative uh, yes. uh, press about uh, mm-hmm. Africa. Yes, don't don't do that. Come home. Mm-hmm. Come and see it for yourself. If yes. you if you reject it, you still have something that you embody. Keep it mm-hmm. and let that help you heal or transform mm-hmm. into something better than yourself that you are now. That, that is something small. Thank you so much. It's big. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. My heart is beating. Oh, I love it. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you so much. I'm gonna I'm going to keep remembering my ancestry. And my ancestors, sorry, and lead with my heart. Mm-hmm. That's what from from today at eight oh three on April twenty seventh. <laughs> that is my new thing. Mm-hmm. Um, before we say goodbye, if there's any like last things that you would like to add into this space, anything at all, I leave it up to you. Well, I would like to say thank you, Zara, very much for hosting this beautiful conversation. And um, as one of my students, not my student, like. Our students of the world said once, is like, thank you for letting me see you today. Um, <laughs> it, I thought it was really beautiful, but also thanks to Dance Immersion for uh, making it possible and connect us all, all, 
all together and thank you eric too because wow and all the students that are there that i see like they're writing and they're like commenting thank you for being here guys that's like it supports us it supports the community and um that's all i have to say We're, we can't do it alone we have to do it together absolutely thank you yes uh, I, i would like to if you allow me um read something uh, quote something from dr kwame nkrumah sure uh, yes um in a in a speech he gave called the african genius in 1963 he said uh, we must regard education as the gateway to the enchanted cities of the mind and not only as a means of personal economic security and social privilege indeed education consists not only in the sum of what a man knows or the skill with which he can put it to his own advantage mm. in my view man's education must be measured in terms of the soundness of his judgment of the people and things and in his power to understand and appreciate the needs of his fellow men and to be of service to them the educated man or woman should be so sensitive to the conditions around him that makes it his chief endeavor to improve conditions for the good of all thank you very much wow thank you so much thank you to the late Kwame Kuma that, that was beautiful. so amazing um this is Eric thank you so much um, thank you so much insight, your you experience your knowledge mm. so appreciated miss tash thank, thank you so much for thank your you so much knowledge. thank you Eric. like julian said my cup has been <laughs> filled and overfilled um <laughs> i'm just i'm walking with a new light now because of the both of you so thank you um thank you. so much uh thank you to uh dance immersion the dance immersion team uh thank you to our founder and executive director ms vivian scarlet our um program our program director and curator Tamia Warren Surrey our lovely communication assistant Jillian Grayson my yes. name is Anna Bedua I'm the administrative assistant on behalf of Dance Immersion we thank the both of you so much thank you, so much. Uh, thank you to everybody that has been in this space contributing to the space I hope you have been fed the way that I have been fed and uh, we just hope to continue to continue these conversations and to continue to connect with each other because no man is an island mm-hmm. we live in community and we need to keep on um living and thriving mm-hmm. in community so yes. thank you so much you. have a blessed wednesday evening thank you. i can't thank wait you. to speak to you again <laughs> same <laughs> anytime anytime yes. you can send an email to me just you know <laughs> no problem no yes, problem yeah same same yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Have a great night. You too. And we will definitely talk soon. Yes. Bye. Yes, please. Yes. Okay. Take Bye. care. Send you care. love and blessings. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.